In this week's episode of CD's Advisor Edge, I want to share with you the affluent, some of the top insights on the affluent so you're in a better position to serve them well. I'm John Bowen, CEO of CD Worldwide, and we're here to help you accelerate your success even more. Stay tuned. You do not want to miss this. The CEG Advisor Edge. Essential insights, real results. To serve someone well, you need to understand who they are. So let's take a look at what our research does in painting a picture of the typical affluent family in the U.S. When we look at this, what we see is levels of affluence. There's really, I'm going to go five levels, even though we have three here. Think of mass affluent as people with 100000 to a $1 million. And this is really a group that we don't study. Not, you know, most of us have passed through that or in a journey of passing through that. And that is where the operational efficient providers in the financial service firm are working with. Okay, we can't be all things everyone. It's very competitive in the mass affluent, the, the Schwabs, the Fidelities, the Vanguards of the world. Some of the robo-advisors are now you know, establishing a position in that market. The affluent, generically we say is everybody over a million dollars, but when we look at the chart, what we see is the million to five million we count as affluent when we're doing segmentation. This is a great market because they're underserved. There's not quite as much competition here. And they have complexity where it can be very attractive to work with them on wealth management. Now we go to the next step and we go to super affluent. This is five to $25 million. Okay, this becomes a little bit more rarefied air. And to give you an idea, uh, 120, almost 120 million households in the U.S., 7 million, roughly, depending on whose data you believe, 7 million have a million or more of investable or financial assets. They're affluent. And I'll show you in a second the, the subset of the super affluent. 5 million, 25 million. Again, this is really not as competitive as what you might think. More competitive than the affluent. But if you're delivering a world-class wealth management experience, all kinds of opportunities. Once you get over the 25 million and above the ultra affluent, it becomes extremely competitive. And it's because we start seeing the multiple family office, the, the private wealth divisions of the major banks and brokerage firms. You know, the talent going after the 25 million and above is very high. And then we have another category we call super rich, 500 million and more that we study. And, and that's typically the single family office or you know, the, the, the extremely wealthy individual that is doing that on their own as well. And what we have is we find the sweet spot for most advisors is the two to 10 million. But really, you know, there's a lot of wealth and it's thinking about what area of level of affluence you want to work with. Now, when we look at the breakout, you can see why I like the affluent. There's a sweet spot here, 92.7. And we see the super affluent, 5.7, and the ultra affluent, you know, 1.6. So it gets really rare up there. The affluent, much less competition. We can create the systems to systemically attract them and serve them. And what's great, if you're delivering wealth management, what you're gonna find is you will also attract the super affluent and the ultra affluent as well. You're not gonna get very many of them, but there aren't that many there. And this is where you, know, you can create pretty great lifestyle businesses or major national enterprises. Now let's dive a little deeper into this uh, painting the picture of the family, the affluent family. What we see is we can see the different generations here. And one of the, the, the big opportunities, when we look at the affluent, we can look at Gen Y 
and even to Gen X, there's not that, it's less than 10% there. It's really the baby boomers and the above the baby boomers where they have the wealth across. And even though, you know, I, I live in Silicon Valley and, and, you know, you see, you know, some super successful young individuals, the millennials and so on, very small number. And there's a lot of gurus out there that are telling you how you can really focus on the younger generations. Well, I got to tell you that if you want to build a business where there's tremendous wealth and you're serving the affluent and beyond, it's not going to be the young. Okay. And this is where, you know, one of the things we've got to be careful of really, you know, so often it's tempting to go with what's being written in the trade press. But when we look at the research, you know, that is very much what's happening. And how we got this research is to share. We have a partner, Wealth Engine. They're a great uh, aggregator of data. And there's about 120 million households. They have about 60 million households. And they were kind enough to share all the data with us. And we were we ran a number of iterations to really go ahead. And the 60 million are those people that have all the data. You know, there's no privacy anymore on the internet, uh, as you know. And so that it's constantly collecting all this information. So we were able to look at it in aggregate and really share it with you. Okay, so those are the ages. Let's go a step further in the marital status. And one of the things that's so interesting is marriage is very powerful on the affluent. You can see it increases along the way. And in addition to that, what about the households? If we look at the number of children age uh, 18 in uh, the affluent households, under the age of 18, you can see the majority are empty nesters. But we can go one, two, not that many, three or more. And what we see, interestingly enough, the ultra affluent have more kids. So, you know, there, there's not a pattern, but if we're going to develop a business, we want to be able to serve, obviously, the empty nesters, but also recognize that a, about 40% of the households are going to have young kids. Now, if we look, one of the things that's really interesting going on is the number of generations in the affluent households. And what we find is there's more than one. Two, the younger generation, three, the older, and look at what's happening here. So in our planning, in serving these affluent families, we've got to be in a position to really help thinking through all three generations as well. Now, let's take it one more step. A big driver of wealth is education. And we find that very few across all levels from vocation and technical, high school, college, grad school, look at the driver of wealth. I mean, we hear over and over again that so often, you know, the, in Silicon Valley, I'm going to go with these high tech, you know, the entrepreneurs are dropping out of college. Well, the data says there's still tremendous value with an education. Now that may be changing with the way that the internet is facilitating working with top professors through all these massive college courses that are available for you know almost nothing. So tremendous opportunities there. But again, you know, when we're giving guidance to this family, we've got to be telling them the, the value of education is huge. When we look at the affluence and the asset levels, we can start seeing why, you know, working at the higher end has a lot more opportunities, but also a lot more competition. These are the investment assets that are available. Now, one of the biggest drivers of this is how they get the assets. And, and I want you to think about this chart because this, to me, is one of the most important charts that I'm going to show you. If you want to be successful as an advisor, you want to put yourself in the line of money. And where is most of the wealth being built in the Western world? Well, you can see in this chart, um, it's business ownership. 
When we look at the affluent, remember one to $5 million, one out of three own a business. When we get the super affluent, three out of four, ultra affluent, nine out of 10. These are huge numbers. These are huge numbers. And when we look at the value of their businesses, and let me blow that up for you, what we see is there's the affluent, they're relatively small businesses. They're really almost jobs. They're oftentimes free agencies, uh, independent contractors. Uh, super affluent, some significant business value. Ultra affluent, this is their equity interest. And then also, let me go one step further. Not only do they care about the people they love, but they care about the causes that are important to them. And look at these. What we have is two thirds, almost a super majority of the affluent, and then almost three out of four of the super affluent and ultra affluent are charitably inclined. These are big numbers. This is where we have a real opportunity. If we understand our clients and our future clients, we can make a major difference. We can help you do this. We have tens of thousands of clients that we've studied at every level of affluence. And we design in our coaching programs exactly how to serve them, how they want to be served so that you can deliver tremendous value and do it profitably so that you can accelerate your success as well. If you'd like to see how we do this, one of the best ways is to do a complimentary best year ever consultation with us where we take a look at where you are now, where you want to go, what are the gaps, and what we would do, the three simplest things we would do if we were in your shoes, to, knowing what we know, to accelerate our success even more, or your success even more. And this is where, I mean, it's, it's amazing how you can you know, shorten what would take normally five years to two or three by taking the best practices and the insights of the affluent and put them in place. Your current clients, your future clients, they're counting on you. Don't let them down. We wish you the best of success. The CEG Advisor Edge. Essential insights, real results.